So this is a big moment for our company because we're actually coming out of stealth right now on this stage. And as Sean said, thank you. It's, it's been a couple years in the making and I'm really excited to show you what we've been working on today. But I just want to take a minute to thank BrainMind because this is the most appropriate stage for us to be coming out of stealth on. We are a product of the BrainMind ecosystem. And particularly Michael McCullough and Calvin Nguyen really helped us put this company together and do our first fundraise. It really helped us create the first public benefit corporation in the neurotech space. So uh, really appreciative to Michael um, and, and really Diana and Tracy and everyone at BrainMind, you've really helped us put this company together. So what are we doing? Well, we're creating the first precise, non-invasive, deep brain stimulation technology that's meant to treat mental health disorders. And as a public benefit corporation, we're deeply driven to help anybody who needs this to access this technology. You've been hearing a lot of us who are trying to get access out there, and that's our fundamental goal. So as you know, there's a lot of people out there in need. So for patients who get access to things like pharmaceuticals, the first line of defense, uh, sometimes over half of them are not going to respond to those interventions, leaving millions of people in need. And so there are a lot of smart people, you've heard of from them today, who are looking at other forms of interventions, which we call bioelectric medicine, that is really developing over the last decade. And it's super exciting because it gives patients access to new forms of treatment that are actually working and changing their lives. And you've heard about that here today. So TMS is one of these cases that's impacted many people's lives. The problem with many of them now is they're quite hard to access. So as you heard previously, TMS is a bit hard for patients to get access to. It's big, it's cumbersome, it takes a lot of sessions. And therefore, only hundreds of thousands of patients have been treated where we need to treat in the millions. And so many of us have looked at other forms of, of energetic modalities to ask, are there other ways to give patients access to these benefits? And you're probably not going to be surprised now to learn that ultrasound actually is one of those modalities. And so we've known for about 100 years that ultrasound can modulate excitable tissue, like neurons, for example. And some of my colleagues about 20 years ago actually revitalized this idea and started applying it transcranially. So you can focus a beam of low-intensity ultrasound across the skull, and you can focus it relatively anywhere in the brain including deep brain targets, which is important for treatment. Now, this is a really exploding technology. Lots of researchers around the world are, are investigating this and developing it. And our group was one of the first groups to do this in humans in 2013. And now it's, it's across the world at many different labs. It's quite exciting technology. So what our team did is we did our homework. We went out and talked to clinicians, patients, payers. We're talking to the FDA. We really tried to understand what are the needs to make a clinical device work in the market and provide the support to patients that we're trying to create. And so what you see on the screen is the Lotus MVP. You're the first people to ever see this, so thanks for being part of this with me. And basically, it's a transcranial-focused ultrasound clinical device that really aligns the technology to the needs of the clinics and the patients, and that's really what we were focused on. What's really exciting about this technology is that as we hit our first indication through the FDA, the same device can be used to treat other disorders as well because it's a focused beam of energy that can be focused to different networks in the brain. And we've started out by targeting anxiety as our first indication. By targeting the amygdala, which is a relatively deep target, uh, we have shown in some of our first clinical trials that patients are getting efficacy within the first session or sessions, which is pretty incredible. One of our patients actually told us that she was experiencing a reduction in her worry, which is a big symptom of anxiety, for the first time in two years. She had a little tear in her eye, and she said, you have to get this out. You have to get this out. This is going to change people's lives. And so, of course, we're not going to be changing people's lives with one session. That's really not how the brain works and learns. But what we're finding, one of our co-founders, Taylor Kuhn, has found in previous study with a different device is that over eight sessions, even treatment-resistive anxious people will respond to this, and, and that likely lasts over time. Uh, we're working with the Acacia Mental Health Group that ran the Big Saint RTMS trial, and they're running our first double-blind uh, randomized placebo-controlled trial. So what's exciting for us about this technology is a couple things. One, you can tailor this to the individual patient. And so what we've done is we've created some software that actually uses the MRI, which we'll use for navigation, extracts the skull, 
and then focuses that beam right to the target for that individual patient, right to their amygdala, or in this case on the screen, to their posterior cingulate. And that's likely why it's working quicker for patients, because it's individualized to them. But what's exciting about bioelectric, or in our case, bioacoustic medicine, is that as we use this on patients, we're going to be learning what works, and then we can update the hardware over the air. So the hardware update is basically a software update. And if you couple that with where we're trying to go with our technology with ultrasound, we can make it cheaper over time. We know how to do that. So as we make it cheaper, more people get to access it. As more people access it, the technology will get better, and we think that's the recipe to make this scale in the market. So I want to leave you with a question, which is how can you help patients access our technology as soon as possible? We want to talk to clinicians and scientists who want to deploy this technology now under IRB. We want to talk to people who have experience getting these types of devices into the market and particularly through regulatory pathways. We'd love to learn from your battle scars. And we want to learn, uh, talk to funders um, and investors who want to get this technology out now. We have our device here. You can come see at the table. You can put it in your. You can put it on. You can. We're not going to stimulate you because you know <laughs> you got to come through our clinical trial. But you can at least put it on your head and you can get a feel for it. And we'd love to get your feedback. Thank you. <laughs>